Welcome to Widowcast Podcast, where you learn how to find the strength to get through your journey and the skills to coach other widows. This is not your average grief group. This is your journey group. It just may show you the way to make something amazing come out of the emotional pain and trauma of widowhood. I'm your host, Joanne Philomena. I'm the best-selling author of Widowed and Widow Coach, and I'm a professional certified life coach. Let the healing and your personal journey begin. Welcome back, my friends. Welcome to episode 125. I want to talk about asking the big questions, the big questions, and they do come to us, right? After Jim died, he died very suddenly and the initial, I went into that initial state of shock that I think all of us experience, right? But as that shock started to lift, I found I couldn't go back into my life as the same self. My life as it had been moments before Jim had a massive heart attack, that life just simply didn't even exist anymore. And if the truth be told, I almost didn't want it to. You see, I had been changed in so many ways in that moment that he died. I had been initiated into a reality that no one I knew could truly understand. I couldn't relate with my friends. My family didn't get it. No one understood. My life was something... I could not just go back to, right? And I'm sure you identify with this. Like, do you feel like your life was just not something you could just go back to now? Suddenly, things that seemed so important to me on the morning of December 29th no longer mattered to me on the morning of December 30th. And as the weeks began to pass, I started asking the big questions. And I bet you've asked these questions too, or some of them, if not all of them, or maybe big questions of your own. The first big question was, who am I now? And I hear this from so many widows that are asking, who am I now? I don't even know anymore. It's the strangest feeling to ask that because it's not as if we were some sheltered, sweet little housewife that just stayed in the kitchen all day, right? Maybe you were, and that's amazing. (laughs) But many of us, we had our own careers and very independent. For me, I had a career I was the one that handled all of our money. I paid the bills. I took care of my car. I took care of anything that needed doing around the house. Doesn't mean I necessarily wielded the hammer myself, but if something needed taken care of, I would find the person to hire to take care of it, right? And kind of oversee the work. So I was not like some coddled, sweet little housewife. Yet there I was after Jim died, thinking, who am I now? Who am I now? And a few months in, I began to realize that all of my sense of self-worth and all of my confidence was like down around my ankles somewhere. And I thought, how did this happen to me? That woman who I was, who seemed so strong and independent, and now I'm like, wishy-washy and can barely take care of myself. The other questions I asked were things like, what is the meaning of all this? Why am I going through this loss and this pain? There has to be a reason for this, right? I asked, why did Jim die when he did? And why am I still here and he's not? What am I doing here? What's my purpose? Right? That was a big one for me. All of a sudden I was like, what is my purpose? And what is the meaning of all of this? What is the meaning? Is there really a God with a design and a master plan? 
for this? And no, the answers did not come all at once. But you know what? Slowly, I was able to start unraveling some answers for myself. And those answers all started with toilet paper and a box of jigsaw puzzles. I'm not kidding. <laughs> if you have been listening to all my podcasts, you may have heard about this before, but I will share with you again in view of trying to figure out who it is I am now after Jim died, right? And having that new outlook on the world that we all gain through that traumatic loss right? All of a sudden, like the world is different for us. And that's really why it feels like our friends don't get it. Our family doesn't get it because we see clearly the, imp what's important in the world and what's not. And we may have kind of lost sight of that over the years in that comfortable ongoing relationship. And suddenly it's like a wake up call for what, what is it we're doing in the world? I was in the grocery store weeks after Jim had passed away. Could have been like a couple months after he passed away. And I was picking up toilet paper, right? Part of my weekly shopping. And I went and grabbed the package of Scott tissue, which is something that was a compromise when Jim and I were first married. Like he insisted on Scott tissue toilet paper. And I was like, well, okay, you know, feels a little like wrapping tissue to me, but <laughs> you know, he was like adamant. This is what he was used to. This is what he wanted to have. It was one of those relationship compromises you make, right? All the little compromises. And as I was putting the Scott tissue into my cart, it suddenly sunk through the widow fog. I realized, hold on, why am I buying Scott tissue? I don't like Scott tissue. I've been buying Scott tissue for over 20 years because that's what Jim insisted on, but I don't have to buy Scott tissue anymore. And I just stood there looking into my cart, kind of going, huh, think of that. <laughs> and I took that package of Scott out, put it back on the shelf. My apologies to the company that makes Scott tissue. There's nothing wrong with Scott tissue, perfectly serviceable. Took it out of my cart, put it back on the shelf. And I walked back down the aisle and I picked up a package of Charmin. And I can't tell you how delighted I was over the realization that, oh, I can just buy Charmin again. And I was so excited to buy that package of Charmin toilet paper. Laugh if you must. It is the truth. <laughs> right? It was all of a sudden, oh, now I know who I am. I'm a woman who likes to use soft absorbent toilet paper. <laughs> so, you know, I came home with my package of Charmin. I even, you know, wasteful, which is kind of horrific for me. I don't waste. Um, I took what was left of the half of roll of Scott tissue in the bathroom off of the roller and set it to one side and thought, oh, you know, I could just use this for something else. And I immediately put a roll of Charmin in the bathroom. I was so delighted with that. One of the other things that I did that started getting me back in touch with myself was that box of jigsaw puzzles, right? You see, I wanted to get in touch with who am I besides a woman who gets happy over buying Charmin again. <laughs> and I reached back into my past to get in touch with Jojo was what they called me when I was a kid, right? My, my whole family called me Jojo. I remember that when I was little, really little, I was very precociously good at puzzles. I can even remember my parents commenting on it, how good I was at puzzles. And I loved to do them because we all love to be good at something, right? <laughs> when you're a little kid and somebody says, oh, you're good at that. It's like all this pride and confidence just soars inside of you and you keep doing it. So yeah, I remembered that. And I thought, oh, puzzles is something I haven't even done for years, probably not since I was a kid. I never got into doing jigsaw puzzles all the time. It wasn't something we did as a family. So I went into one of the big box stores 
and I found there was a box of 10 different jigsaw puzzles. And they were gorgeous. They were little tiny pieces. They were not easy puzzles. Very nice puzzles. So I bought this box with 10 jigsaw puzzles in it, brought it home, and took one of the puzzles out and dumped it onto the dining room table. And, you know, every evening... I would sit down and maybe add a few more pieces to the puzzle. Or if I was feeling stressed about something, I could just go sit in there and work on the puzzle. I started putting puzzles together. It was just a way of reconnecting with something I was good at, which is what I really needed to do. And it was reconnecting with myself. Um, I haven't, I never did all 10 of the puzzles even. And I've since, you know, as I'm clearing out the house, I've since donated all the puzzles now to um, Salvation Army. So, but it was something that started getting me back in touch with what I was inside. And doing something as simple as getting back in touch with doing puzzles, this kind of led to deeper thought. I began to remember all of my beliefs that I held to be true. Now, my beliefs are not necessarily your beliefs, and some of these beliefs may sound weird to you, but this came over lots of years of study and lots of years of reading and um, bouncing this stuff around with Jim. We learned an awful lot together over the years. And here are some of the beliefs that I held to be true. We choose to be born into a human body. Before we come here to this planet, we actually choose. We are like, I want to experience a lifetime on planet earth. And we choose the family we're born into for the greater lessons we'll learn with them. Right? And I believe we choose ahead of time, like before coming to earth, when and how we will die. It, it is as if it is all divinely inspired. So like when I met Jim, when we met, it felt preordained. I think it felt that way to both of us. It was like we had been in a relationship with each other for thousands of years already. So then I began asking, like, what did it mean that he died when he did? And if I figure that out, what am I to do with that knowledge? Right? What do I do with that knowledge of why he died when he did? And, I, you know, I began to turn towards wanting to serve a greater purpose in the world. I wanted to be working on something that would excite me and make me want to jump up out of bed in the morning, right? I wanted to be excited about life again. And I wanted what I was doing to have mean something in the world, to be creating something in the world. I could no longer tolerate just doing some by rote corporate job. That was just, you know, I didn't feel like I was contributing to life in some way. And I had started thinking bigger and looking bigger outside of myself as I began asking those big questions after Jim's death, right? Those big questions, who am I now? What is my purpose? What am I doing here? Why is it he's not here? And is there really a design and a master plan to all this? I think the answers are yes. If you've heard my story, you know that shortly after Jim died, Um, I had like this real aha moment, like 48 hours after he died, 48 hours after he died was New Year's Eve. And I was, you know, watching on TV, all the people gathering in Times Square to watch that ball drop. And I was reminiscing on when Jim and I had sat together to welcome in the new year, the previous new year right? The beginning of 2014. And I thought, oh my gosh, when we welcomed in 2014, he had no way of knowing it was literally going to be the last year of his life. He died at the end of 2014, December 29th. And then I wondered if he had known, right? On January 1st, 2014, like this is going to be your last year on planet earth what would he have wanted to do differently? And as I thought it through, I realized, you know what? I don't think there's 
anything he would have done differently because Jim always lived his life on his own terms and <laughs> exactly the way he wanted doing what he wanted, right? Which was one of the things I really admired about him. You know, at first it might seem like, oh, who's this cocky guy? Who's this cheeky monkey, you know, who just takes anything he wants and thinks the whole world is his oyster. <laughs> what part of that world is my oyster? But I came to really admire those traits. And that's when I realized, you know what? I need to live 2015 as if it's my last life, my last year of life on this planet. Because he didn't know last year when we celebrated New Year's Eve so there's no way I could know that this is not my last year on the planet, right? This was New Year's Eve going into 2015, 48 hours after he died. And I decided I'm going to live this year as if it's my last year on earth. Every day has to have some joy. Every day has to have some meaning for me. I have to make the most of every day of this year. I owe it to Jim for me to do that because I'm still here, right? I'm still here. So that was really the beginning of getting some big answers, right? I could look back and, and think to myself, why did Jim die when he did? So that my eyes would be opened so that I could begin living every day, savoring every day, knowing how precious every day is that we have on this planet. I began waking up in the morning, looking out my bedroom window and sitting up in bed saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for another day on this in paradise, right? To me, planet earth is like, this is it. This is paradise. It can be horrible here. Horrible things happen on planet earth, but in contrast, beautiful things happen on planet earth. And we probably wouldn't even recognize all of the beautiful things if those horrible things didn't happen too. It gives us the contrast to know what beauty we are surrounded by here. As I went into 2015 and um, realized about six months into 2015 that it was not the year that I wanted for my last year on the planet, because I was working in a job that was making me feel a little miserable, wasn't the best, people were not the nicest to work with. And I woke up one morning and went, oh, something needs to change because I'm really dreading having to deal with this today. And I have dreaded it yesterday and I dreaded it the day before and I dreaded it the week before and something needs to change. And I quit my corporate job, just stone cold quit, meaning I now had no income again, no money coming in at all. It was one of the scariest things I ever did. It was also one of the best things I ever did because what I did was I left that job and decided that coaching is what I loved the most about the work I had done over the last more than 20 years and that that's what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And when I got in touch with that, when I was able to get really deep inside and say, hold on, this is what I need to be doing with the rest of my life. This is what I'm going to be doing with the rest of my life. Suddenly my purpose began to unfold, right? Didn't unfold all at once. I didn't start coaching widows right out of the gate. I was coaching stop overeating for permanent weight loss because I'm very passionate about how dieting damages us. It doesn't really work. It's not the best answer. So that was my focus, but I quickly began having widows reach out to me because I did started doing this podcast and I switched over, um, to working with widows because it was so fulfilling for me. And I discovered how powerful it is to be able to coach a new widow, to get her on track, to help her be able to process and experience all the emotions that are coming at her at once, right? And guide her into building a new future for herself. When our spouse dies, our future like just disappears. That's like yanked right out from under us because every thought we had about our future was included them, 
right? And all of a sudden they weren't there anymore. So being able to reach out and guide another widow so that she can turn and begin to see ahead of herself and where it is she wants to go, the things that she wants to accomplish and do, that's life-changing for her. And it feels so wonderful to be able to give that to another widow. So I began answering some of those questions for myself. And I began doing work that was making me jump up out of bed in the morning, excited to do this. Right? And that's what really feels wonderful. And where does it all go for me? I don't know. I just keep creating with this and I keep going where I'm guiding, guided. It's like following little breadcrumbs through the universe to find where it is I need to be. And do I have all the answers now? I don't. I really don't. But I think the important thing for us is that we keep asking the big questions. We keep them in the forefront of our mind and we keep going after the answers. Because those are the big things, the big questions. Who are you? What is the meaning of all this? What do you want for yourself in life now? What is important to you in life now? This is what I help my clients uncover for themselves. It's just what I do with my clients because I want to see them be excited about life again. I want them working on something that excites them and makes them want to jump out of bed in the morning, right? I think it's amazing when we can begin to serve a greater purpose in the world, a greater purpose in our life, a purpose we feel guided to do. And so that's what I help my clients uncover. To me, that's the most fulfilling thing in the world. So how about you? Are there any of these questions that you've been asking? Have you uncovered some answers for yourself? Like, who are you now? What is the meaning of all this? Do you feel like you woke up with new eyes after your spouse died? Like you see the world so very differently. You see the preciousness of every day now. I want to hear about it. You can tell me about it. You can email me. I'm at Joanne, J-O-A-N-N, at JoanneTheLifeCoach.com. That's my email address. Um, I also have the new subscription site for widows. If widow coaching isn't something you feel ready to jump into right away, um, and not every widow feels like they're at that point yet, Certainly many widows do. They're looking for the bigger thing and they want to come through my 12 week course to learn how to coach and become a certified widow coach. You can reach out to me about that. If you are there, if you're not there yet, if you feel like oh, I still have work to do for me, go check out widow coaching center, widowcoachingcenter.com for that subscription. Um, the subscription is amazing. There is a registration fee that covers the first month. Lots of content in there for you. It's going to help you commit to making your way through there and getting some answers for yourself. Each month you stay on is a, is a low monthly membership fee, subscription fee, and each month more and more um, video information will come in there to kind of step you through the process right? Each month I do a coaching call for all the members so that you can be coached. You can get your questions answered and we all get to know each other. I love that so much. So you can check that out too. I look forward to hearing from you all. Get out there and find some answers for yourself. Even if you have to reach back to when you were young and what it was that you loved to do and then start doing that just kind of reconnect with who you are, the base of who you are inside. I think it's so important. So get out there, find some joy in every day of your life. We all chose to come be humans on planet earth together. And so in doing that, there should be joy, there should be love, and there should be connection for all of us here. Because we've probably jumped onto this planet together so many, many times before. I'll talk to you all next week. <laughs>